Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Drum History News. Today is an exciting one. It is about a robbery that happened at the Gretsch factory in the 1920s. And what's really cool about this article is I shared it with Lucas von Gretsch, who is in the Gretsch family and was my guest on the podcast this week to do an episode all about the history of the company. And he said no one in his family or at the company had heard of this incident. Uh, so pretty neat that this is like being unearthed for the first time in um, almost 100 years. So this one is from the Brooklyn Daily Eagle in Brooklyn, New York uh, in 1927. And it says, police net closing on bandit gang for Gretsch Co. hold up. Arrest of three who got $1,100 after cutting telephone wires expected soon. The police momentarily expect to capture the three bandits who held up the office of the Gretsch Manufacturing Company at 60 Broadway Monday afternoon, obtained $1,100, and got away in a blue automobile. Donald Pendleton, credit manager of the firm, who was one of 16, I think that's what that number is, persons in the office when the holdup was carried out, visited police headquarters this morning and looked over the prisoners arrested for other robberies, but was unable to identify them. E.P. Ockert, the cashier, had just received $2,200 that afternoon for the payroll. It was in an armored car from the manufacturer's trust company. About half of this had been distributed when the two men walked in the office. Both carried six shooters, and one standing at one end of the office ordered, Hands up. The other thrust a threatening muzzle into Pendleton's face. Where's the payroll, he asked. Pendleton didn't know. Where is it? The bandit repeated, turning his gun to cover Ockert. The cashier indicated the money with a nod, then ordered all to turn their backs to the door. The two seized the money and stepped out. Pendleton rushed to the window and saw the gunman escaping in a blue motor car. He just had time to get the license number. The robbers had cut the telephone connection in the office, but Pendleton notified the police from a bank building at the corner. So this clearly isn't a small thing. I mean, these guys are cutting the telephone wire to this huge factory building. They're planning ahead enough to know when the uh, payroll was coming in from the armored car. Clearly like a premeditated thing. So, you know, Gretsch had to be doing pretty darn well to have bandits coming in uh, and <laughs> studying it and robbing them um, at a specific time. So pretty cool to see, though. And again, I love that no one at Gretsch had seen this. So I'm excited to share it with the world and uh, we can all kind of learn about it together. The credit for this, though, goes to uh, my friend Jerry Ryman, who created the Percussion in the News binder here, which has tons of these articles. There's a lot of Gretsch ones in there, so I'll do some more of them. But I wanted to specifically do this one for obvious reasons, because uh, it's pretty cool. You don't see this every day. Um, if you haven't, be sure to go back and check out the previous podcast episode with Lucas von Gretsch about his family's background and uh, some really amazing in-depth stories that I don't think you'll hear anywhere else. Um, so thanks for checking this out, and I will see you next week. 